Riesling Revolutionary with me, Alex Down. Today we're uh, going Australian. Um, you may or may not know, but uh, at the moment there's a, a campaign out in Australia, Summer of Riesling, um, as a concept that's been pioneered uh, over the last few years out in the States, out in New York. Um, it's where wine bars, retailers, uh, producers, restaurants, they get together, um, run for promotions and offers on Riesling just to try and get people engaged, um, people talking about, people drinking this, uh, this awesome grape. So last year it was exported to Australia for the first time, really successful campaign and uh, just a few days ago it kicked off the year two. Um, so uh, yeah, we got the t-shirt, we got the Summer Riesling t-shirt, we've got two Aussie Rieslings, so we may be sitting here in freezing cold midwinter here in the UK, um, wrapped up um, you know, in our woolens while you guys are uh, applying the tang oil and, um, and wearing flip-flops and shorts, but we can't be criticised for not supporting, supporting the campaign, so let's get, let's get cracking. So, two reasons today by a producer called um, um, Producer Pusey Vale, uh, owned by the same family um, that own Yalumba, uh, the Hillsmith family. Um, and uh, these are Eden Valley Rieslings, so Eden Valley is very, very high, so 500, around 500 metres, keeps it nice and cool. Um, Rieslings are a cool climate grape, so it really likes that. And, uh, and so let's, let's kick this one off. So this is the Pusey Vale Eden Valley Riesling, 2010 vintage, so it's still pretty young. 13% Aussie, Aussie Rieslings on the whole tend to be very dry. Um, especially in comparison to their European counterparts, their German counterparts in particular. So, uh, so let's give this one a whirl. Okay, let's see what we can pick up on the beak. Okay, already, already getting those classic uh, Aussie notes. Uh, in a lot of Rieslings, you get what's called a sort of petrol aroma, and it sounds uh, sounds really odd, but um, but it has a sort of chemical compound in the grape that can produce that a lot of the time. Um, usually in European, in uh, in, um, in Alsace and German Rieslings, it tends to um, tends to only come on uh, after a few years. But in the Aussie Rieslings, uh, you often get it quite young, and already getting that, so it's almost like a sort of petroly toasty note. But you can look to citrus there as well, really exciting, like uh, lemon and lime, which is also really common. So that's really exciting. Let's give this one a taste. Mmm. That is lovely. Again, that citrus is really coming through. Really dominant. Bone dry. No residual sugar there at all. Really quite an austere wine. I say austere, but what I mean by that is it has bone dry structure. Absolutely lovely. But what does come through, lots of citrus. That lime just comes charging through like a bull, which is absolutely, absolutely lovely. I'm already thinking Thai food, you know, something spicy, something hot. This will go really nicely, that fragrance. There's almost like a sort of lemongrass in there, which would stand up quite nicely, I think. Some kind of uh, sort of, you know, I'm thinking beef Thai salad. I don't know. But that is really, really lovely. Mm, lovely acidity, gives the wine a great structure, but also makes it very refreshing. And um, and also getting that sort of that um, sort of like a wet stone, like a minerality, which um, which again just um, pulls together beautifully with, with the um, with the citrus flavours. So yeah, really young. I think it's got a lot of aging potential. Um, you know, maybe not maybe not decades, but certainly could uh, certainly be laid down for a few years. Um, but it's it's dry, it's fresh, it's crisp, got loads of citrus, um, great food wine, um, and I reckon with something Asian, you're into a winner. Good stuff. Okay, well that's a great start, moving on to number two. So, Pusey Vale also, um, 2005, so uh, this bad boy's been in the bottle for quite a few years now. Um, it's the Contours Riesling, so also, um, also from the Pusey Vale vineyard, so we're high, sort of 500 metres up. Cool climate, but um, but this is the museum reserve, so um, slightly some slightly more premium wine, um, but I uh, say from the same area, same producer, but um, some five years older. So let's, uh, let's see what we can pick up on this. Okay. Slightly dark, dark colour. Already, I'm getting on the beak. 
yeah, some serious toast and petrol on there. As I said, you'd expect as the wines develop, Rieslings, they often do pick up these, uh, these sort of toasty and, uh, and petrol notes. And, you know, some people as a mum might think you love it or you hate it, but Rieslings, Riesling aficionados like me, I know most of us love it, so I can't get enough of this. But a really complex aroma. Uh, underneath that, you're getting a sort of honey, almost like a marmalade. Um, flavours, obviously, and the, the, the fruits obviously had some time to develop in the bottle. And the citrus is there, not surprising. Okay, let's give this one a whirl. Mm. Okay, that's really interesting. So, similar to the um, 2010, it has, it's fiercely dry, there's no residual sugar there at all. So, you don't need to worry about that. Riesling, a lot of people think it's a German sweet wine. It's not, Germans make great sweet Rieslings, but this, the Aussie style, often dry, and this one really is as well. But what's happened is the fruits here, they developed, it's got a sort of more, um, um, it's moving from this, there's some citrus in there, but it's moving much more towards um, sort of developed sort of honey, marmalade um, flavours, which uh, which you're definitely picking up on the nose. The minerality is still there. It's um, mm. yeah, that's great. I mean, I think it probably um, probably could you lie down for a little while longer, but I think it's drinking brilliantly now. If you want a great example for a, for a really good price of um, of a slightly aged uh, Aussie Riesling, I think this would be a great bet. Um, you know, I think it probably comes in about the first one comes in about the ten pound mark. This one comes in about thirteen, fourteen pound mark here in the UK. You can get them. You can definitely find them. Um, and um, again, this would go. It's a really good food wine, but um, slightly more dominant, slightly more complex flavours. Um, but definitely onto a winner. So. These two, um, I think it's a really good way to celebrate summer of Riesling. Definitely a uh, good way to start our first, uh, first uh, Aussie wines on the video blog. Um, Louise Rose, the producer, keep up the good work. You've been a pioneer out for, uh, for women producers throughout the world and, 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 and wine makers out in Australia. Um, so, you know, cracking job. And um, yeah, I look forward, to, uh, I look forward now to uh, getting stuck into these properly. All right, see you next time.